Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Deck Studios. Welcome to another comic style painting tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be painting Magic from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Now Magic is kind of a newer character in the Marvel Pantheon, but I decided to take a lot of notes from her brother Colossus when I was painting this miniature. I'm gonna begin the process by just base coating almost everything. I'm gonna be using P3 Midland Flesh for her skin, P3 Asheth Gray for her clothing, P3 Meaty Ochre for her hair, and P3 Troll Blood Base as the base coat for the metallic parts. So with the P3 Midland Flesh, I'm looking at painting her midsection, the tops of her thighs, her right arm, and of course her face. It's worth noting that this is actually my mid-tone color. I'll be adding a little bit of shadow to this, so if this feels a little bit light, there's a good reason for that. Midland Flesh is a little bit on the translucent side, so expect to put down two or three coats for good coverage. There's also a tiny circle of exposed flesh there in her cleavage. Make sure you don't forget that. Magic's outfit is pretty simple in that it's just one color of leather from head to toe. I'm using P3 Asheth Gray here because it's just a little bit of an off black. And that way I've got a little bit of room for the black line to show up later. It's got a little tiny hint of maybe a purple in it, which just makes it visually interesting, but it's not distracting. Just like the Midland Flesh before, this is a little bit on the translucent side, so you can expect to put down two coats for good coverage. You'll want to make sure you don't forget Magic's leather belt as well, and her right arm, but not her left, because her left is entirely encased in metal. Or is metal, I'm not quite sure on that. Actually, scratch that, you do want to paint her left hand in leather. It's just the arm itself that's metal. So here I'm base coating Magic's hair with P3 Meaty Ochre. It's worth noting she has two little crown elements sticking out the side of her head that are really easily confused with hair. Just keep an eye out for those. I'm using P3 Troll Blood Base as the base coat for the metallic parts. And this comes from my metal recipe I used on Colossus for, well, half of Colossus. In this case though, it's going to be Magic's knee pads, her belt buckle, most of her left arm, and then those two little crown things sticking to the side of her head. I really like Troll Blood Base because it's kind of a desaturated teal. It's just got a little bit of blue to it, a little bit of gray. It feels like either one depending on how it's used. And it works really nice as a mid-tone in a sequence going from black to white because it just lends it a little bit of color. Up next, I'm going to be painting the sword and portal as one continuous thing. I'll be using P3 Moro White, P3 Arcane Blue, and P3 Signar Blue Highlight. And I'm going to be working back and forth a lot with these colors. It's going to be a very kind of messy, make it up as I go kind of process. So I'm going to begin this with a base coat of P3 Arcane Blue on the inset parts of the sword blade and then carry that into the entire big portal whirly thing. Now the raised details on the blade, I'm gonna paint later, but right now I'm not worried about getting some paint on those because it's a lot easier to do the blends I'm gonna be doing here from white to arcane blue to the deeper blue. If I'm not worried about avoiding those little raised areas, I just kind of work over them and come back and clean them up later. So with this first pass of P3 Mora White, I'm focusing on about the middle half of the blade and then just selected parts of the portal kind of towards the middle. The idea is that the portal will be brightest in the middle and kind of getting darker towards the outside. In miniature painting, we often talk about the hot garbage phase where things just don't look good. This is definitely that. Don't be discouraged if this looks really messy, it's gonna come around. So here I'm using a 50-50 mix of Mora White and Arcane Blue to blend the areas between that rough white and the existing blue and to brighten up some more parts of the portal. And because these transitions are still really rough, I took some Arcane Blue, really thinned it down with water, and I'm using that just to go over the edges of the last step. So now I've switched over to Signar Blue Highlight, and I've really thinned this down as well, just with tap water, nothing exciting, nothing special. And I'm using that to come in at the edges of the blade and just kind of smudge and feather that into the transitions I already have going. 
Once I get down to the portal, I'm going to focus on these outer extremities, these sort of long swooping points, the underside of the portal itself where it faces the base, and then underneath these sort of swooping structures here. I'm not so much creating shadows in what is probably a big swirl of energy so much as trying to create contrast between it and the brighter points. Here I'm continuing to use Signar Blue Highlight, but I haven't thinned it down quite as much. It's got a little more potency to it, just because I was finding it was not quite bringing the saturation that I wanted to these outer areas. So I'm just coming back in again with another coat of it. And if I, you know, kind of overstep and I have to blend back again, so be it. If you've ever watched me paint live on Twitch, you'll probably know that my blending process tends to be very organic. It's very, very back and forth. I'll often start with my mid-tone, work right into my highlight, then start pulling the shadows up, and then just kind of smush things around until it looks right. Unfortunately, that organic process also makes it kind of awkward to teach because it just looks right is a really subjective value. All right, now I'm jumping back to my mid-tone, my arcane blue. This isn't thinned very much, a little bit of water in it just to give it some nice flow. And basically I'm hitting the undo button on parts that ended up with too much Signar Blue base on them. When I get up to the sword here, there's a little more water in the arcane blue just so that it helps blend the existing work a little bit better. And proving just how back and forth my blending method is, I'm coming back out again with Mora White and basically hitting the parts I already did Mora White on because I feel like I just knocked them back too far. I really want that center channel of the sword to be just punchy and glowing and it needs more white to do that. And here I go again with the P3 Arcane Blue and Mora White mix, just kind of feathering out that center channel. Then right after that, I'm going to come back in again with the P3 Arcane Blue, thin down just a little bit, and using that to try and blend the last step all the way out to the Signar Blue highlight around the edge. All right, after a few minutes of back and forth there, the blends on the blade and most of the portal at least don't suck. They can be better, there's still some more work to do, but they're getting there. Now what I wanna do is start to bring up the bright points on the portal itself. Now you can see the brush I'm using, the bristles are kind of splayed, and as I work, I'm getting you know a handful of small kind of parallel brush strokes instead of just one small fine point. My hope is that doing that creates a little more chaotic texture, makes it feel a little more like untamed energy. And here I go again, back to Signar Blue Highlight, using this to add some deeper values to some parts of the portal and just hitting the edges of the sword where it maybe got knocked down just a little bit from my previous blending work with Arcane Blue. I swear there's an end in sight here where, you know, things will just look right. We're not there yet though, still kind of halfway through hot garbage. Taking some more white and just bumping up the values one more time, making the middle of that sword that much brighter and picking out some of those high points on the portal again. And because I can't help myself, more arcane blue to blend that out because the white was just too big a value jump in some spots. When I say that my blending process tends to be very back and forth, very organic, make it up as I go, I'm not kidding. It's a lot of fill in the gaps and then see what works and what doesn't and kind of just push things slowly closer and closer to their neighbors. Lastly, I'm taking some really thin down Signar Blue highlight and just working that into the deeper crevices of the portal so I create more contrast between them and the high points. Next, I'm painting facial details and skin. I'm gonna start with some P3 underbelly blue to paint the eyes, and I'm not concerned about how accurate I am. One of the great things about magic is you don't have to worry about painting pupils, and I can just take skin tones and box them in later. Magic's mouth is wide open, so we have to paint the inside. I'm using a dark red P3 amethyst rose in this case. I also used a little bit of P3 Mora white, who was already on the palette, and painted her top teeth. To add some shadows to her skin tone, I'll using P3 Idrian flesh, I'm going to start by framing the eyes in, and that's basically coming up and around the eye socket. You'll see me put a little bit on the side of the nose as well to create a little bit of a shadow there. Here we come under the eye, and I'll also use these to sort of create the shape of the cheekbones, and even paint a little bit of a shadow just underneath her hair at the hairline. 
Now I am going to blend a lot of this later with some P3 Midland Flesh, which is our skin base coat. So if this looks a little bit stark, like too sharp a transition, don't worry about it. We're going to fix it later. Now I'm also using P3 Idrin Flesh here to create some lining around some of the more distinct muscle definitions. So that's really around her abs, her belly button, and underneath her ribs there. I'm being a little bit subtle with it. I'm not going to pick out like every single six pack, for example. And I am using a little bit of this just to add a tiny drop shadow underneath her clothing as well. There's definitely a little bit more hot garbage phase going on here. Some of these spots just don't look great. It looks like I've gone too far. It looks messy. I promise it's going to get fixed. And here I am with a little bit of P3 Midland Flesh mixed with some water and using this just to kind of clean up the margins of those Idrian Flesh spots, especially the ones that look just a little bit splotchy, just clean the splotch up. This is proof that you can fix a lot of your painting mistakes with more paint. Now to add a highlight to the skin tone, I'll be using P3 Rin Flesh. This is almost a white. It's a very subtle off-white with just a little hint of peachiness to it. I'm going to use this to really just grab the top point of each of these different muscle groups. And here to help create a bit of a sense of motion, a little highlight in the middle of each of the thighs just to make them feel like they're kind of moving forward. So there's some cardinal points in the face you want to make sure you get a highlight, a little bit of the brow ridge, a little bit of the cheekbone, the tip of the nose, the bottom lip, and often you want a tiny highlight on the chin as well. Finally, a little highlight on her right upper arm just to create a sense of motion and depth. To add a highlight to Magic's clothing, I'm going to be using P3 Great Coat Gray. Now, you can ignore this little part right here. My original thought was to create a lot of texture. I immediately changed my mind, but I wanted to leave that in because otherwise this shot would make no sense where there's a whole bunch of paint already on her thigh. So what I'm doing instead is more of a classic cell shaded kind of panel where I do big opaque color blocks with really no transition. Now because magic is jumping out of this portal, I want the highlights to really point away from the portal instead of being a more traditional kind of top down detail. So you can see I'm highlighting the front of the leg, the front of the foot. There's a few places where I kind of play this formula a bit. For example, these leather straps, I'm just highlighting the top of them. You'll see here as well, I add a little highlight to the top of her calf. And with the belt, I'm really just highlighting a more of almost a general edge highlight to just help it stand out from the surrounding details. Now, as we get to Magic's torso, we're further away from the portal at this point. We don't need to create those sort of like contrasting highlights and shadows in the same way anymore. So I'm doing more of a traditional top down highlight here instead so you can see I'm really kind of focusing on the shape of the breast that little bit of edging at the bottom of the midriff and then of course the elbow and top of the right arm to take the highlights a little bit further I'm going to mix a little bit of underbelly blue into the great coat gray roughly 50 50 and then just kind of tightening up on what I've already done you know just focusing it towards the middle or outermost edge depending on the shape here. Now I'm keeping this highlight a little more tightly focused than the last one. It's, you know, it's pretty much just a thin line through the middle of any detail. And this lends the idea that it's a high gloss kind of surface as opposed to something more soft like a suede. You know, it has this ultra reflective kind of feel to it when you get a bright point of light coming off of it. This is where you can really use highlighting to control how a surface reads. Now thanks to the magic of comic books where our inspiration comes from, we don't really have to worry about the fact that, you know, a patent leather bodysuit is probably not very practical when you're in a high motion kind of situation. You know, superheroes wear what they want and physics be damned. Now with the great coat gray, I didn't really bother highlighting Magic's fingers because they're so tiny. I'm jumping straight to the final highlight instead. But it's important to leave a little bit of the Asheth Gray showing between each finger so we get a nice deep dark line. Helps them look distinct. Next up I'm going to use some P3 Underbelly Blue. That's my slightly blue off-white to add highlights to the different metal parts. So that's the knee pad, the belt buckle, the left arm, and those crown things sticking out of her head. 
What's interesting about Magic is that she's a more modern comic book character. A lot of the art for her is very full texture, full color, but I wanted to paint her to match her brother Colossus, and I painted him already right before this in a very 90s X-Men inspired way. And so I stole a lot of the colors and sort of shape language for the metals from how I approach Colossus. Long story short though, I'm going to be adding a lot of black to these areas, so I'm leaving a lot of the troll blood base visible. Now this is a squirrel moment, it's got nothing to do with the step I'm on, but there's a tiny little X on her right shoulder. I grabbed some of the amethyst rose that's already on the palette and just painted that quickly. All right, and back to the metals, I'm using some P3 Moro White to just sharpen up those highlights I already created. Really just adding a second brighter point on top of all those underbelly blue spots. Wow, that's out of focus. Okay, camera, come on. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Can you do it? There we go. Okay, that just what wraps up the metallic areas, except there's gonna be a lot of black coming their way a few steps from now. Here I'll be using P3's Moldy Ochre to highlight P3's Meaty Ochre. Basically, their two ochres work really, really well together. Who knew? So the idea with highlights on the hair is to really try and capture the motion of the hair, because it is a moving, I mean, it's static because it's plastic, but it's meant to emulate a non-static object, right? And so I'm focusing on, you know, the bangs, the sort of flyaway parts here, and then anywhere the hair really has a lot of kind of volume changes where it kind of swoops up and down, really trying to grab it on the up. Because it's the, you know, most pronounced uppermost part of the head, I'm really trying to make sure there's a good highlight on the crown as well, the top round part of the head. And here I'm taking the highlights just a little bit further. I mixed in a little bit of P3 Moro White with the Moldy Ochre, made a little bit of a lighter color. And I'm really just hitting the topmost parts of each of these little highlighted areas. So at this point, there's really just some detailing left to go on the sword. I'm picking out P3 Great Coat Gray, which is the same color used as the highlights on her clothing. I'm using that to paint the hilt and the center channel detailing, whatever you want to call that, on the sword itself. Now this sort of series of chevrons and lines through the middle of the sword, they are a raised detail, so the trick is you want to make sure you get the edges of them too. You can't just paint the top, you kind of got to paint the sides. And it's a little bit tricky because they're pretty small details, like they're not raised up too much, but you do want to make sure you're not leaving that alone because it looks a little bit obvious if you do. Here I've mixed a little bit of P3 Underbelly Blue into the Great Coat Gray, and I'm just using this as an edge highlight for those same darker areas of the sword. Now when I get to my comic style lining, I'm going to be basically ignoring the sword because it's mostly a big glowing thing, and so I'm going to make sure I pick these edges out now since they're not going to be defined any other way. And finally I'm taking a small brush and a little bit of P3 Moro White and just really bumping up the value of that white inner channel of the sword, really just improving the contrast between it and the dark areas I just created. Similarly, I decided to take the white and just pick out a few of the brightest top edges of the portal swirly bits. You can see that I'm focusing these extra white highlights towards the middle of the portal where I kind of imagine the energy is kind of the most prevalent. Plus a little bit here to create some action lines on this part where magic kind of just like leaping up and out of it. And now it's time for my favorite part of comic style painting, and that is the black line. It's the thing that makes it comic style. Now my favorite ink to use here is Hagen's Black Magic. I can't speak to the praises of this product enough, but if you can't find it locally, there are other inks that work just as well, or at least almost as well. Dale Rowney FW Black Ink, Liquitex Carbon Black Ink, Speedball Super Black, Amsterdam Black Ink. All of these inks are fairly comparable. They use the same pigments. They're all acrylic base you'll probably be happy with any of them. So here I'm using the black ink to create some sort of faux reflections in the metallic surfaces. The idea is that there's 
shadows of things nearby that are being reflected. Don't really care what they are. I just want some generic weird shapes kind of being bounced back. This is a very sort of 90s and earlier approach to drawing metals in comic style. And I find it just works really well on miniatures. The other thing I'm doing is just taking the black lines and really just tracing the model. So anywhere the sculpt has given us a good, easy line to follow, the break between her clothing and her belly, her belly and her belt, etc. We're just following those given lines. Now here I'm doing a little bit of black line on the belly to accent the muscle groups, make them look a little more illustrated. I'm being very careful here. I want to keep these lines very thin. I don't want to add a lot of weight to them because it ends up just looking weird if, you know, lines on soft tissues are too strong. Similarly, any lines I add to her hair, I want to keep very thin as well because we want the hair to still feel, you know, like soft flowing blonde hair. We don't want to add a lot of weight to it and heavy lines make things feel heavy. There's a few cardinal points on the face I want to make sure I line as well. I'm outlining the eyes and this is a nail biter. I'm really trying to keep the line very, very thin and discreet. A very thin line above her teeth, below her upper lip. There's a couple little lines that I added as well below her lower lip and accenting her cheekbones. Now getting to her arm, the first thing I'm doing is just again following the sculpt, taking the lines that are given to us. And here I'm pulling in those shadows into that troll blood base deeper area. And you can see they've got some defined shapes and they're kind of wider at the edges and a little bit thinner in the middle. Probably the best way to describe these are shadows and reflections as texture. So we're not reflecting an environment or a nearby character or anything in particular. We're just creating the idea of shadows and light sources in the environment somewhere doing something that is of course intentionally very vague but that's kind of the point we're not trying to create a sense of realism we're trying to create a sense of a comic book my own reference for that kind of metallic texture really comes mostly from 90s era x-men you also got characters like silver surfer for a good metallic reference because it's everywhere but in this particular case i was using colossus as my reference because he has a very similar metallic arm and of course they're siblings now the one thing i chose not to cover in this video is how to paint the base most of it's obfuscated by the portal and the rest is just plain gray concrete which i've done in every other crisis protocol video so you can watch those if you need to all right magic is done i'll be honest i really love bringing this piece to life there's a lot of dynamic movement a lot of energy and it's just a fierce piece i hope you've enjoyed this video and until next time do something epic I just want to take a moment and thank everyone who has supported the creation of this video and many others over the years. My patrons over at patreon.com slash epic duck, my Twitch subscribers, and just my loyal fans. There's been a huge outpouring of support, especially for comic style painting, but just everything I do in general, there's people behind me. I can't do this without you. I appreciate it so much. Everyone, your names are all over here. You know who you are. Everyone who's helped make this happen over the years who's kept food on the table, kept the roof over my head, kept the lights on, kept the stream going. I appreciate each and every single one of you. If you want to join the flock, you can do that at patreon.com slash epic duck. Five bucks a month gets you access to some behind the scenes stuff, gets you the unedited versions of these videos, PDF guides, and my eternal gratitude. Thank you so much.